please subscribe to this channel for more videos related to Catholic Christian teaching. The book of Genesis narrates the story of Melchizedek. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. According to traditional interpretation, Melchizedek brought out bread and wine in order to offer a sacrifice to God, as was customary in the celebrations of victory, and not for the refreshment of the weary warriors. This interpretation is affirmed by the express indication of Melchizedek's priesthood. The specific priestly activity is sacrifice. According to the Messianic prophecy of Psalm, the Lord has sworn and he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Christ is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek, that is, he is king and priest at the same time. And according to the interpretation of tradition, offers a sacrifice similar to that of Melchizedek. This sacrifice can only refer to the offering of his body and blood under the forms of bread and wine at the Last Supper in the Holy Mass. Both the Jewish writing of Philo and Christian tradition assume that Melchizedek offered sacrifice to God with bread and wine. In the sacrifice of Melchizedek, the fathers see the prototype of the Eucharistic sacrifice. St. Augustine says, The sacrifice appear for the first time there which is now offered to God by Christians throughout the whole world. God speaks through the mouth of the prophet Malachi to the Jewish priests. Oh, that someone among you would shut the temple doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Here God is proclaiming the abolition of the Jewish cult of sacrifice and forecasting a new clean sacrifice. This is not the sacrifice of the heathens or of the diaspora Jews. For the former were not clean oblations on account of their desecration through the service of idols, and the latter were not offered in all parts. In addition, the sacrifices offered outside Jerusalem by the Diaspora Jews were deemed unlawful. The universality of the veneration of God and of the new sacrifice, which is proclaimed in the prophecy, points clearly to the Messianic era. The sacrifice of the cross cannot be meant as this was offered in one place only. The prophecy is fulfilled in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which is offered in all parts in the sense of a moral universality, and which, in view of the sacrificial gift 
and of the primary sacrificing priest is a clean oblation. The most ancient tradition referred the prophecy of Malachi to the Eucharist. Isaiah proclaims a priesthood from among the Gentiles for the Messianic era. And I will also take some of them as priests and as Levites, says the Lord. A special priestly status is, according to the Old Testament view, not conceivable without sacrifice. Pointing to the sacrificial character of the Eucharist is the very fact that Christ made his body and his blood present under separate forms and thus in the form of a sacrifice. The separate forms symbolically represent the real separation of the body and blood of Christ, which was made in the sacrifice of the cross. The words of institution attest the sacrificial character of the Eucharist. Christ designates his body a sacrificial body and his blood sacrificial blood when he declares, This is my body, which shall be given up for you. This is my blood, which shall be shed for you. The expressions to give up the body to shed blood are biblical sacrificial terms which express the oblation of a true and proper sacrifice. Christ designates his blood as the blood of the covenant. As the old covenant of God with Israel was concluded by the offering of bloody sacrifice, Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The blood of the covenant is synonymous according to the biblical conception with blood of sacrifice. From the present tense of the participles of the Greek term didomenon and ekonomenon, the conclusion has been drawn that the sacrificial action is completed in the present, that is, at the Last Supper. Linguistically, however, the reference to the near future is possible. As a matter of fact, the reference to the laying down of his life and shedding of blood on the cross need not be excluded. Otherwise, the Last Supper becomes an independent sacrifice alongside the sacrifice of the cross. Because according to the words of institution, a numerical identity exists between the body and blood present at the Last Supper and the body and blood offered on the cross. One should conclude that the sacrifice of his life on the cross will also be present with the body and blood. The expression in Luke's Gospel about the Last Supper chalice that was poured out it specially points in that direction. From the commission, do this in remembrance of me. It follows that the Eucharistic sacrifice is to be an ongoing institution of the new covenant. The letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians draws a parallel between the partaking of the Eucharist and the partaking of Jewish and pagan sacrificial foods. The participation in the table of the Lord and the participation 
in the table of the demons are mutually exclusive. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. The argument appears to presuppose that the Eucharist is a sacrificial food, but sacrificial food implies a preceding sacrifice. Please go to YouTube Retirement Tality channel playlist Sacraments for the complete series of these materials.